In World War Z, insane difficulty can be pretty daunting. Just one zombie can hit you for one fifth of your total health. You're not given nearly the same amount of resources as you would lower difficulty. Friendly fire becomes extremely brutal, and specials can damn you in just a couple seconds. But with proper preparation and knowledge, even the hardest of difficulties in this game is doable with the right team. Here are my tips to survive insane difficulty. I'm not too much of a stickler of forcing people to play certain classes to succeed. In fact, I despise those type of people. But if you're really having trouble doing well on Insane, the first and easiest thing you can look at is the classes that your team has. First and foremost, the Medic and Fixer are incredibly strong classes, and you'd benefit from having one or both on your team. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the other classes aren't good. In fact, a well-rounded team will normally end up doing better than one that stacks too many of the same role. For example, even though they're strong classes, having four support-based classes play together is not a great idea. But the same goes for having too many focused on horde killing, or too many focused on tanking. A decent balance is needed. But what's the best fit for your team all depends on the people that you're playing with. Maybe you're in need of a particularly strong class in horde killing. A Hellraiser or an Exterminator fits that role nicely. If you need a class to tank and provide spacing, and generally be the first to fight the wall of zombies, a slasher is your man. But at the end of the day, nothing quite compares to how strong a good medic or fixer is. Medics can single-handedly keep the team running through stims and temp health, and they'll revive pinned down people in a pinch with extreme ease. Avoiding every single hit from a zombie is nearly impossible, and with the higher damage you're dishing out, having a good medic alleviates the worry of dying prematurely. And on the other hand, a fixer using masking grenades can drop them down to hide everyone when shit goes south, and due to the masking nature of it, you can also use it for objectives and reviving teammates. A fixer supplement to turret ammo and increased health for defense kits also makes him an extremely valuable asset for scripted hordes. This also kind of leads to my next sub-tip, equipment prioritization. The medics and fixers should almost always get first dibs on equipment drops, and for the medics, they also get first dib on all medkits, no contest. Their equipment is much more important than having just another grenade or molotov. Hordes are doable enough where it's not totally necessary to have things like grenades or C4, but a stim? A stim that can save your ass when you get pinned? And a masking grenade that can clutch hide an entire team? They're way more valuable to have. Oh, and one last thing that needs to be mentioned, since some people don't really know, you should really only heal after you've gone down once. If you go down a second time, you'll instantly die, so using a medkit should only really be after someone has gone down, but it's still useful to top someone off if you know they're going to need it. Just don't be wasting equipment when others can be using it. More often than not, teams will take unnecessary damage or even flat out fail in places where they shouldn't have spent too much time on. Finding loot is definitely important, especially considering the lower chances of finding decent gear on insane difficulty, but if you spend too much time looking for stuff in an area you could have just passed by, you may find that the damage you take may not have been worth the venture. In most cases, it's better just to go by quickly than spend too much unnecessary time, say, looking for a breaching charge which might not even be there. In this case, learning the common places for loot to spawn in each map is extremely helpful, but it's also understandably difficult and somewhat tedious. Regardless, being able to pass by a room quickly means less time dealing with the enemies, and also less time for the game to decide to spawn extra enemies to fight you. However, that does not mean that you should just rush through everything. Charging in recklessly is just as good as going slow and making no progress. You have to be smart with how you proceed. Another thing to mention is that in this game, there are sometimes multiple routes that lead to the same place. Something I learned from Jackie Chan Adventures is that the best battles are the ones that are not fought. If there is a path of less resistance, take it. There's literally no reason to go with a route with more enemies, and it's not worth possible loot spawns. However, there will also be many situations where there is only one way to go, and you have to go through a bunch of Zeke. And in these scenarios, it's best to clear them quickly and quietly while trying not to alert them all. A little piggyback from the second tip, silencers? They're stupid useful in this game. They'll allow you to pass by many sections unnoticed if you're quick enough, which means you won't have to deal with the game spawning in extra mini hordes. More often than not, there's very little difference between a level 4 and a level 5 upgrade with a weapon. So it's almost always more beneficial to use a weapon upgrade with a silencer. Thankfully, most level 5 upgrades actually come equipped with a silencer. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use unsilenced weapons. 
It's just that if you're going to go through the level, don't use anything other than something with the silencer or your melee if you're not in a scripted horde section. There's no reason to draw undue attention to yourself, and if you raise the sound level in the game, it'll just spawn more enemies that you shouldn't have had to fight in the first place. Also, weapon upgrades in general? They're incredibly useful for insane difficulty, almost more so than a fully leveled class. I've played with quite a few people using classes that weren't fully leveled up, but since they had a decent weapon upgrade, they're still able to contribute a fair amount. Be sure to focus on getting at least a few decent tier 1 and tier 2 weapons upgraded to level 5, since tier 3 weapons, they aren't always guaranteed to be found on the harder difficulties. Friendly fire hurts like a mother. And things like heavy weapons can down a teammate almost instantly. Make sure you pay attention to what the heck you're shooting. And if you really need to help a teammate, don't bring out the heavy and shoot around them if they're still alive. With that being said, personally, I'm okay getting shot if someone's trying to help me. You know, I'd rather get shot by a teammate than let a zombie get too close behind me without me knowing. That is unless you have a shotgun. Shotguns and heavy weapons, they're doubly dangerous for friendly fire. They can kill someone nearly instantly. Friendly fire from explosive equipment like grenades and C4, they also hurt, but they tend to be less damaging than heavy weapons. So in a pinch, they're a lot more useful for saving teammates in the right situations. Now, friendly fire is a two-way street. Both the shooter and the person getting shot have to be aware of their surroundings. More often than not, it's easy if you're the shooter. You know, just don't shoot a guy in front of you. But everyone has to be aware of their own positioning. Am I sitting in front of a turret line of sight? Am I right in the middle of a choke point? Am I strafing back and forth like I'm playing Counter-Strike? If you answer yes to any of those questions and you got shot by a teammate, it's your fault, not theirs. If you have to get close because you're using a shotgun, go off to the side or crouch. If it's a really small choke, go find a corner. This game is fairly lean in how close you can get to a wall and still shoot down a corridor. There are plenty of ways to avoid getting shot, but at the end of the day, it mostly just boils down to positioning. It's easy to know where to defend against the horde. Shoot the hundreds of zombies pouring out from that direction. But unfortunately, what most people forget is this game likes to spawn a couple of stragglers above or behind the players. These are the guys that'll really screw you over if you're not careful. On Insane, it doesn't take a whole horde to bring someone down, just maybe two zombies from behind can instantly down a guy if he didn't notice they were coming. Always have at least one or two people watching the flanks. It'll help out immensely if you have someone always keeping their head on a swivel and watching the possible flanks that enemies can go to. Learning the map is really the only way to know where stuff can come from, so it just takes practice. During scripted horde sequences, I almost always put auto turrets facing the flank instead of the main horde because their auto aim nature makes them invaluable for defending your ass when you're focused on the giant pyramid of zombies in the front. Plus, with auto turrets in general, they're just one of the more ineffective defense kits for the main horde. There's too much to shoot at and they run out of ammo too quick. It's better just to use them for watching the flank. A small but pretty useful tip. Wait until you reach a scripted horde sequence before you use that breaching charge. The chances of getting good loot are always pretty low, but as long as you open it up in a scripted horde area, you'll almost always be given a defense kit, which can help make those objectives a cakewalk. It's much more important to get something then, than opening a door as soon as you started the game, only to get a couple of equipment bags when nobody really needed one. Again, this is not something you absolutely need to do, but in general, I find that it's more helpful to wait and use breaching charges a little bit later. This one's a pretty big no-brainer, but you need to be comfortable fighting specials and knowing how to counter them. For example, know the common places that a lurker can spawn. Be sure to know the cues for them spawning in the first place, how to listen for them. Know that you have to shoot a bull in the back. Know ways that you can dodge them if you're the one being targeted. And most importantly, know that the easiest way to deal with one is to work with your team. Too often have I seen people panic and run right toward the team when being targeted by the bull. Don't do that. If you're the one being tracked, at least try to face the other direction from the team so that the teammates have a chance to shoot at the bull's weak spot and bring him down easily. If you just run at the team, nobody's really going to get a chance to shoot his weak spot and you'll have to rely on other methods. Speaking of other methods, Know that for the specials, and specifically for the bull, there are many ways to CC them. Explosives can make them bounce around pretty easily. 
The Slasher Stun Gun makes Bulls a complete joke. For the Screamer and the Gas Bag, they're very straightforward, but all the same, make sure to take care of them first before the other zombies. And also, make sure to ping your specials. When you ping them, they glow bright red, and even someone as colorblind as me can see them easily out of the horde. A lot of the tips that I talk about here are really big no-brainers, a lot of common sense, and some of them just boil down to having good teamwork. Work together to bring down specials, communicate with your team to share equipment, work together to avoid friendly fire, all of that. Insane difficulty isn't impossible. It's certainly difficult, but with practice and learning the maps, it's fairly doable, even without needing the perfect team. If the team watches each other's back and sticks together, getting lurked alone, that'll never be a problem. If you help out that one guy that spawned way in the back, he'll be able to contribute for the next fight. Things like that. Hell, the only times I've even completed it on Insane were with random, so all you really need is just a team that works together. But the fact that it needs to be said, though, is really quite sad. But there are some people out there with the wrong mentality. Let's take the classic Kill Whore, for example. I got the most kills, so I did the best, therefore it's not my fault that we failed. Except because you were hogging all the equipment bags and the med kits, so our medic couldn't heal the teammates when they went down. Or maybe let's say you were too focused on the big main horde and you totally ignore the guy behind you that got pinned by a bull or lurker because you didn't want to watch the flank and all you wanted were the big kill numbers. If that's the case, you are potentially a direct reason as to why the team failed in the first place, even if you did get the so-called most kills. You're literally fighting brainless, mindless zombies. There's really no glory in it. Work together, play to win. Nothing more, nothing less. Oh! <laughs> 